Hi everyone, this is Megan Van Petten. And this is Lindsay Poss. You're listening to the Esports Next podcast. Here, we will highlight the fantastic guests and speakers of the Esports Next conference. Esports Next 2022 is presented by Morgan Stanley and is located in Sweet Home, Chicago. Don't forget to register to secure your spot at the conference and enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Esports Next podcast, the official podcast of the Esports Next conference. I'm Megan Van Petten, and I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Lindsay the Boss Poss. Thanks, Megan. This episode, we are delighted to welcome Terrence Burke, who is Senior Vice President of Research and Editor-in-Chief of the Trend Tracker at Kidsay. Terrence, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining us today. Ah, thank you. My pleasure. So can we, you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, what was your entry point into esports, what do you do currently, all that good stuff? Sure. So, you know, we're kids say we've been tracking kids trends since uh, the last century. Actually, 1999, we started with a, a trend tracking device. And what it is, is really what makes us unique is we work through schools, right? Our, our founder, Bob Reynolds, was a school fundraiser, and he recognized that schools are continually in need of that kind of off budget spending for, you know, field trips and computer uh, equipment and, and scholarships, et cetera. And so he married the idea of just information, right? We don't do any selling or promoting of anything. We just ask kids about their lives. What's their favorite thing to do? How they um, spend their time? Um, what do they aspire to be? So um, we pay the schools, right? We've contributed almost $2 million uh, to schools over the years. And so it kind of uniquely positions us because we have access to kids and information that companies uh, who are really kid focused come to us to say, let's hear the authentic voice of kid. And so, you know, in that two decades plus, if you haven't been aware of gaming, right, you haven't been aware of kids, right? Uh, the idea of us having to understand how it was impacting kids everyday life, not just from entertainment, but their understanding of narrative, their ability to connect with each other. Gaming was essential, is essential part of all of that and, and their childhood. And so my really entry point comes from talking to kids uh, for the last uh, two decades. Um, another entry point would be getting my butt kicked by my son in FIFA 2005, but that's a uh, you know, that's a whole nother deal awesome. uh, as far as gaming is concerned. But, you know, for, for us at Kids Say, um, you know, uh, major gaming companies have come to us. You know, one of the one of the the biggest uh, first person shooter gaming said uh, when they wanted to launch that um, that toy to life uh property that earned them billions, um, they didn't know who kids were, right? They didn't know what a five to seven year old was. They needed to understand from a developmental standpoint, from a socio uh, economic or social emotional standpoint, they needed to know kids. So they came to us about a year and a half before the launch of that um, property and had us sit down with them multiple times to talk about who kids were, what was important to them, how they behaved, what they aspired to be, the kind of archetypal things that they that resonate with them. And so we've been at Kids Save been um, pretty much in that realm of helping companies understand who kids are so that they can meet their needs. Wow. And and what a difference kids say has made. I love the the acronym, the acronym of the mission to lead um, at listen, empower youth, advance knowledge and drive business. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So if for us particularly, you know, we think for all our clients, you guys know your business. What you need to know is to know kids, right? If you want to meet them and engage them where they're at and help lead them in the process of being and becoming, because we're all in that process, right? We're all on that same journey of being who we are and becoming who we will be. For kids, that is such an essential part of their experience. And particularly when it comes to play, play is how they do that, right? So for us to give that kind of uh, connection for companies directly to let them hear from kids themselves and to kind of um, 
I, I call it swim in the ambient waters of kid, right? Uh, they get drenched by the data and the insights that we provide. And then, then they go back to their desk and create the kind of properties and products that engage kids and help them in that process of being and becoming. And that's really what our, our mission is all about. So for people who want to learn more about this and how they can use kids say, where can they see you speak at eSports next? What what are, what contribution are you making at the conference? Yeah, so I'm going to be on the um, the uh, trend panel um, and I'm really looking forward to that. I, you know, um, John Davidson, president of, of uh, the eSports Association is the one who kind of he reached out to us, um, I don't know, a couple of years ago and we've been engaged with him and he kind of recognized that we, particularly from the kids space, offer a kind of unique perspective that would help folks understand. You know, one of the things we've always talked about is kids are universally um, the same as they've always been, and yet expressing that kiddom through the current cultural prism. So Gen Alpha, right, and, and Gen Z and millennials, et cetera, all have a kidness in common, and yet because they came up during a certain, um, as, as we were talking just before, right, when Megan and I were sharing some anecdotes from our uh, childhood, we come through a different prism that we, we express that kiddom with. And so Gen Alpha, while the same as every generation before, is also unique in every way because they have been immersed so much in this moment. And so they've expressed their kiddom in this way. And that's one of the things I hope to be able to provide for all the folks who come you know, to the conference, a true understanding of, oh, so um, Gen Alpha is, is a, a unique beast, right? And unique people that we need to really understand and know because they, their experiences have been different. And, you know, I'll hope to lay out some of how that, how that, um, that experience shapes them. It's very interesting. Um, I, you know, trends and children and human development. Um, obviously, we're at a point um, where we've never seen what we're seeing now, where children are in this digital age from the beginning. What I mean, what are you seeing that you can share just a little teaser of, of what we, you know, what we're what we're up for learning? I, I find the whole human development from 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 birth to death fascinating. <laughs> but yeah. uh, what are you seeing as far as trends for our kiddos? Yeah. So so this is one of the the really interesting things. You know, you know, I know the 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 business world and so many of our clients are coming to us regarding the metaverse and its impact and what it will be in being prepared for it. Right. And when you talk to kids like uh, three quarters of five to seven year olds, we, we track kids from five to 15, right? Um, five to, three quarters of five to seven year olds have, um, have said they've never experienced it, right? 91% don't even know what it is. And yet they've been living it. Yeah. Right. Uh, the the, the uh, David Forster Wallace, the late great writer, uh, famous um, speech, What is Water, has an anecdote that I think fits perfectly. Um, an old fish is swimming by, comes across uh, two young fish and uh, the old the old man fish says, uh, howdy, boys, how's the water? The young the young ones swim away and turn to each other and says, what the hell is water? Right. They have no they have no yeah. context. That's all they've known. And yeah. that's true with kids in the metaverse. They've been living Roblox and Fortnite and Minecraft. They they're so immersed in it. They don't see it as anything unique or different or new. Right. They've been living it. They're so primed for them. It's not a new nomenclature. Well, it is a new nomenclature. It's a new name for it, but it's not a new thing they have to learn. Yeah, they They've grown up in it and are and are living in and experiencing and it's a natural kind of thing for them. And so understanding that as companies, um, as the esports world explores these issues, understanding that kids are coming to it from a very different perspective from them. Right. Um, is an important thing to know. I love that perspective. Um, as as outside of this show, I, I host a podcast on on women in the metaverse and emerging trends from the metaverse and tech and Web three and the kind of general consensus from that has definitely been that the metaverse or Web three or whatever it may be, we're just all going to be in it without even realizing the same way we went from web one to web two without even realizing. And kids yeah. are absolutely in Roblox, especially is absolutely yeah, yeah, the thing yeah. that gets brought up all the time. Um, yeah. So along those same lines, and as more people kind of 
I don't know if get into the metaverse, but <laughs> as we sort of all make this transition into having more use of emerging tech or changing the underpinnings of tech, as that kind of starts to happen, what do you think that companies can do to make sure that they're being inclusive about the way that they bring everyone into the fold? Yeah, I, I love that question because in talking to kids, and it's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I'm, I'm by nature, I'm an optimist, but um, it gets reinforced for me all the time by talking to kids and seeing how um, they value inclusivity and and seek it and and just inherently just as they live in the metaverse, they are so much more compared to past generations, so much more um, naturally aware of the idea that, yeah, we're all on this journey and we all have a place here. Um, and uh, we expect that to be the norm. And so I'm, I'm really optimistic about the idea of diversity and inclusivity as the, as the generations come up, but there's still work to be done there clearly. Right. Um, particularly from, from those in the, uh, you know, with the same problems that we see throughout any social networking where, you know, uh, the loudest, angriest, uh, vile voices often get amplified and it drags the community down. I see kids reaching out. In, in fact, we talk to companies, I don't know, um, at least a, at least a half a dozen years ago, uh, may, maybe it was four or five years ago. And because we were talking to kids, we found out why Discord was so important for some niche um, markets for them because they could create their own little places that were away from that kind of general toxicity, right? They could say, I want to find those places where like-minded folks who shared my values and, and uh, welcomed me for whoever I am, right? Neurodiverse, wherever it may be, were, um, where they could create their own places. And so, you know, I'm really optimistic about the future without being naive to think that, no, there is, there's work that, you know, has to be done. Uh, I'm really inspired by um, um, a man I met in, in a Bronx school in the South Bronx, the, the poorest congressional district in America, who's, who started the Bronx Gaming Network to try to not only help kids understand the the business but unleash the opportunities in their head to say oh this is possible for me to take my skill my interest etc and make a career out of it and so you know i see examples all the time of people reaching out to say how do we make sure that this you know be, because the platform by itself should be the most inclusive there is um because you know the, it's just the possibilities are great, and I know we need to focus on that. I'd love to hear from you guys about that. I know this is a podcast where, uh, you know, you're talking to me as an expert, but, um, you know, it, I'm optimistic, but I know work has to be done. Well, that's that's amazing. And we appreciate your optimism and all the work that you've done and continue to do in the space and to carry the legacy, you know, on for so long of um, the original mission. Uh, Lindsay? Yeah, so I, I love that you threw the question back at us because that's not something that we get very often as hosts. Um, so I appreciate that. And I will say that much like yourself, I truly believe that kids are going to be the ones to show us um, how we can open up and be more inclusive. And I also hope that, to be honest, companies should be motivated by their bottom lines because the more people yeah. they can include, the more the more customers they can serve. Um, so I, I hope that that eventually becomes a realization that, hey, being being nice to everyone actually yeah. works off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one last question kind of before we wrap up here. We talked about this a little bit before the show, and I know that you mentioned that you were interested in answering this, but how do you keep yourself motivated despite obstacles or barriers or even just burnout and tiredness? Yeah, so, um, and that's where working with kids is such a treat um, because their natural kind of joy and, and exuberance and energy and the fact that I, you know, being focused on that, I, I was trained in um, therapeutic um, ed education, shows child development, etc. Um, so I get to see each new kind of iteration, each new generation of, of kid and how um, they approach the world. And I, I believe they approach the world in a better way uh, every, every time. And that's really exciting. And that's really motivating because it keeps me fresh. 
Um, it keeps me hopeful. It keeps me optimistic. And, um, you know, with the new technologies that come along and, you know, the, the bumps along the way for that, um, I see kids um, maximizing the potentials of those. Um, and and that's that's really what does it for me. Well, we really look forward for you sharing your gold here in Chicago, August 22nd and 23rd. We thank you so much for all that you bring and all that Kids Say does. Um, for those of you that haven't registered, please join us here in uh, in Chicago, August 22nd and 23rd. Um, Lindsay, did you have anything else that you wanted to add? That's all. If, if you haven't registered, go visit esportsta.org. Come see Terrence. Come see all the other wonderful speakers that we have lined up. Learn more. Say hi to us. All that good stuff. All right, Megan and Lindsay, thank you. Hope to see you in Chicago. Thank you. And, and we'll that see you, you will. Thank you, Terrence. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.